I will only give you a, sort of a, a few snapshots uh, of my encounters with Nambu and his work. Uh, and um, I will give you a little a bit hint to um, how we worked, you know, in 2008 when he finally got the Nobel Prize. I got first time in, elected to the Nobel Committee in 2001, and you know, being there uh, surrounded by experimentalists, you have to have a plan. And this was my long-term plan, and um, when we came to the year 2008, I wanted to really do it. Um, and this is just to tell you the way we work. You know, we get the, uh, the deadline is January 31st, and then we start to work. And um, then, of course, my, one of my great worries at the time was that Nambu was old. He was 87 years old. I didn't know about exactly his health. And I couldn't go around and ask. I couldn't check here. Um, but I remember I happened to see Bob Wald somewhere in, in South America. And I had a long, you know, I was asking about everyone I knew about in, in, in Chicago before I finally asked him. I was Nambu, and he said, well, he's fine. So I was having this you know, nervousness the whole time. And in the spring, we wrote a long report on broken symmetries, which you can read in 43 years. And um, then on June 3rd, we presented. Then we have to present all the reports we had written, and we had a long discussion at the academy, what's called the physics class. And, uh, then during the summer, what we usually do in the committee is that we write on all the subjects a long review on all the nominations, well, the, the important nominations and the subjects. And we did it, and I was all the time a bit nervous. Um, finally, on August 27, we decided on the proposals of the committee, submitted that to the academy. Still, there were, <coughs> um, you know, we had to, well, the Swedish word, the, 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 this booklet, we had to describe it to this, the physics class of the Royal Academy. We had two meetings, long meetings, and uh, we did, you know, really had to defend it. And, and um, you know, of course, most of the things are confidential, so I cannot say too much, but you can imagine that um, experimentalists say in condensed matter, they were not so, um, well, they, they, they didn't understand the subject, I would say. So after that, eventually we decided all the physicists were for it, and then we have to wait for two weeks. And this is the amazing thing that um, essentially it's finished, and uh, we have to make, meet, wait for the final meeting, and somehow it doesn't get out. On October 8th, we um, finally uh, presented this to, the, to all the members of the academy. So that, this is when the, 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 the vote takes place. We all <coughs> um, we had to present it again. And now the, the, the whole academy is there. And you know, they consist of, it consists of, of people from all su sorts of subjects. And you might get. Uh, questions from philosophers or from chemists or whatever. And we voted and then we went to make this phone call. And of course you know that it was um, it was a divided prize, both the Kobayashi and Maskawa, and then to, to Nambu. And we tried the Japanese people first because it was daytime for them. And then in the end we called here to Chicago. And you know we it's a very nervous moment. Finally, someone takes the, the receiver, and, and, he said, and, and then the, 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 the secretary said, you know, these words that was so nice for Nambu to hear. And then he gave the receiver to me. And then, you know, I, 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 I was so moved that I couldn't speak. I was, <clears throat> finally I said, congratulations. And I was feeling, I think he understood me, but I couldn't say more. This was sort of, in a sense, a dream come true for me. This is what I've been wanting for so long, and it came through, and we managed to do it. So that was 
good for all parties. Um, of course, then I had uh, at the, oh, what's that? We have to go to the de December 10. That's when the ce ceremony starts. So I had to, um, I had a friend there, you might recognize him. He had borrowed my second uh, set of tails, so I <coughs> got used for that. Um, and eventually there was the ceremony. And of course, unfortunately, Nambu couldn't make it yeah, because his wife was sick and he had to stay here. We had to do uh, the ceremony here. And um, I had the, the other dream I had had was that I should be able to once when he stood there to address him in Japanese. Fortunately, the other two were also Japanese, so I, I had an excuse to, to try to learn enough Japanese for the day to be able to, 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 to say it. And I was practicing like mad. Now, I had a good teacher back home, so I shouldn't complain. And in the end, you know, I gave it. And for the Japanese, this is what I said at the end. Unfortunately, uh, the, the ceremony here in Chicago was uh, some hours later, and we had to we could transmit, and, and, and Bob somehow, being the chairman, managed to um, um, also uh, we managed to transmit my speech, and even get the translations, I guess, so we could give it. And finally, this was um, it was all there. Of course. <coughs> You might remember that, um, or you could see that the way we thought of it was to, to divide up this um, subject into um, two, two prizes, broken symmetries, it was called. And of course, the other, Kobayashi Maskava. And in that, the, the whole, I can, so much I can say that there was a big discussion about the other part of the prize because um, we left out a certain person. And as uh, Sergio Ferrara told me recently, he said, do you know that you are a, a, an enemy of the Italian physics community? I said, yes, I've noticed that. But this is the way we did it. So finally, it worked out. That was a very happy moment for, not also for me. So let me g give you a little bit background to the no Nobel Prizes. You see, <coughs> They are given for a discovery, and not for lifetime work, not for a series of discoveries. Um, and of course, Nambu had done so many discoveries. That, that's, in a sense, a drawback. So if you really want to have the Nobel Prize, you should do one, one big thing, and then you should be silent. Um, <laughs> and just wait for it. And, um, and of course, as we have heard, it's, it's not so easy to study his papers. They were uh, not easy. But fortunately, uh, Toru and Nishijima came out with this book, which is the uh, most wonderful book. I think it's, you know, it's like the Old Testament. You can read it over and over again, and you find new things all the time. And this is, I think that people should, in the end, you know, people will study it uh, many years from now, and they'll discover new things in it. And I found that. So they just said what I wanted to say, that the book benefits from the inclusion previously of previously unpublished material in formal lectures and conference summaries that are not widely available. You know, in order to get the prize, you really, it has to be, um, you know, submitted somewhere, it has to be printed, you have to be able to read it, you, you cannot go by hearsay. And in this, there were uh, some of those materials which were extremely useful, and I'm coming back to that. So, <clears throat> of course, the whole work for, for the prize started with, with the superconductivity, with uh, the BCS theory, where you couple QED to phonons with a Fermi surface, non-relativistic, but the ground state of Cooper press, and of course it's not really gauge invariant. Um, and that was a problem. And Abu once told me that he had Schrieffer had been here uh, uh, a few days before uh, they, they published the paper, and he was so bothered about it. There was something that he, he didn't understand. And he was really working on, on it. So, 
He worked hard for two and a half years. You know, in, in, in the summer of 1959, he, he really had understood what was happening. So, of course, people have gone through, and, with, and as Emil said, people know his papers. But this is a paper you can study over and over again. Because it sounds fairly easy. I mean, it just assumes the vacuum expectation value for, for, the, for the Cooper pairs. And he's using a sort of Feynman Dyson formulation. And he computes higher quantum correction. And he drives, you know, that it is gauge invariant. That was the whole key, you know. Because, of course, this is what had worried him, you know, that th the theory didn't look gauge invariant. And people were, you know, arguing at that time. There was especially this, uh, you, you must have known this guy, Schaffroth, or... Yeah, uh, also here, Wenzel was here. Wenzel yeah, yeah. wrote a paper mm. and said that the theory is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well. And Schaffroth was um, very much against it, and he was writing... Those uh, <coughs> I was trying to find that paper, and I, I couldn't. But once, you can see, here you can see, way back... Um, a guy in, in our department who was at that, that time the head of the, uh, the chair of the Nobel Committee, he came to me and said, read this paper and tell me what it is. So I read it 20, 30 years or whatever, and I explained it. But now I couldn't find it. But, but of course, <coughs> this shows, this is so important, you know, in, in both for superconductivity and for particle physics, because he understood, you know, what, what's really happening, that this is a uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking. So he did compute. He could compute the Meissner effect, and uh, he could understand that the gauge symmetry was spontaneously broken. So, um, and of course, the Meissner effect is like giving the vector field the mass. And at some stage, he writes. I think it's after the famous formula 7.2. We see that the previous collective state. And this is my uh, comment in the brackets, which corresponds to zero mass, has shifted its energy uh, to the plasma energy as a result of the Coulomb interaction. And of course, this is the BH effect in a non relativistic case. Um, and eventually, when the, um, you know, when the Brout Ongler Higgs effect eventually came in, there was this important paper by. Phil Anderson, uh, uh, w where he, he always was extremely sympathetic to Nambu, and he was always pushing for him. But he always said that, that he didn't discover the, the Higgs effect. But you know, if you read, um, well, Anderson has one more comment about the going from uh, the non-relativistic to a relativistic case, where he says that it should be somehow washed out, the, the difference between the longitude now. But I'm sure that Nambu understood it, but he never any claimed priority, which is, I guess, another um, obvious um, his, his, um, virtues that he was so, you know, um, gentleman-ish, I should say. Um, but then, after that, came his paper on, on PCAC. And, you know, was, I don't know how it was at the time, when people read it, uh, because somehow it takes this formula out of the blue. I didn't write, but he, he derives PS, PCAC, and the pi in mass is the one which is breaking, the, 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 really the conserved <coughs> axial current. And the, the pi is the number of most important. And so the paper, I mean, it's really, an, it, it came four days after the, another famous paper, the Gelman Levy paper, where they also discussed PCAC. But they never understood really the, the spontaneous symmetry breaking aspect of it. They had many other, uh, you know, really interesting <coughs> things in their paper. Among uh, one thing, they had the Kabibo angle, which they computed correctly uh, in, in a short note. And of course, this is um, the reason why the Italians are so upset with me. Of course, you cannot go around uh, that, that they did it. Sorry? Sorry, can you hear me better? Yeah. Okay, so anyhow, I mean, you just reflect how important this paper was for nuclear physics because it gives you a, a pion with a low mass which allows you to, 
to really do nuclear physics. But the, the paper, if you read it now, you know, with the knowledge we have now, it's very difficult. And you know, if, you, if someone has to go through Nambu's work, you know, 40 years after, it, it's really difficult to say, how, where did he get it from? But fortunately, and this is where my, uh, coming back to, um, uh, you know, giving talks, he gave a talk at Purdue. Well, actually, Gianni Lassini delivered it. And it's a detail, it's wonderful. And this preprint had disappeared. And one, sometime, this is um, a bit confidential, <coughs> but sometime in the 90s, uh, the Nobel Committee had commissioned a report on Nambu's work. And there was someone, a person, sir, was trying to, was writing, you know, about him. But he, he, he says um, he cannot find this paper. He had been looking all over, but it was not there. And, and you know, and once you have it, uh, and of course it, it's, it, you, you can read it in this book, then it's, you know, it, it's been really doing things extremely carefully and, and it's explaining exactly what he meant. So this is how we compare superconductivities and strong interactions. And so instead of having three electrons, you have what he says, hypothetical fermion. But they are, you know, so he, he says that the pion is, it consists of a fermion and a fermion pair of two particles with very small mass, like MeV. So this is four years before quarks. Of course, it's four years after Sakata, but, but you know, Sakata, the, those particles are, are massive, so this is a completely different uh, mechanism. And then he's co comparing, you know, what of course, in the, in the superconductivity, he has a phonon interaction. Here it says it's unknown. And then the energy gap is the observed mass, and the collective excitations of the meson. And then the thing which it, it does not explain too much is that, of course, in one case, you have sup the gauge invariance in superconductivity, and in the strong interactions, you have the Kyrie invariance. And it, then he's slightly breaking it by a small mass. Um, and of course, he, he realizes that this spontaneous symmetry breaking leads to the number of Goldstone boson in, in this case, but he, he does not comment on it in the, in, the, in the local symmetry case. But anyhow, the rest is history. But it's, you know, th this paper makes a world of difference. So if you really, you know, are interested in getting a Nobel Prize, you should write up your talks and that someone, someone evidently found the, the old, his old, preprint or whatever up here and it could be retyped. So um, it's important to, to write and write so that people, you know, 30 years after can understand. Okay, that was for that work. Let me also just briefly discuss his role in dual models. I think it was very, of course, very impressive that he, at the age he was, you know, got into dual models. Dual models was a, a field for people you know, under 30 at the time. Uh, he was one of the few older people. Man, Stanley Mandelstam was another one. And, uh, but he didn't write up things. He, he probably kept them for himself. But in June 1969, there is this conference at Wayne State University. And again, you know, he wrote a long detailed article explaining what the, he meant, and there, we explain factorization, the operator formulation. And then he has this sentence <coughs> that equation 17 suggests that the internal energy of a meson is analogous to that of a quantized string of finite length. So this is the first, you know, really non first relativistic string uh, which is mentioned. And this is, of course, the, the basis of that we now believe that's a string. But he realized it, and he, but he puts it rather carefully, you know, suggests. Of course, it was uh, showing that it was a quantized dream. Let me just uh, also add a few minutes on this um, famous paper from the summer of 1970. Uh, he was supposed to lecture in Copenhagen, and his car broke down when he was driving from Aspen. So only the, 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 uh, the, the written version of the talk arrived. I was there, you know, was a, a graduate student at the time, and we got this paper, and he had typed it himself. 
And at some stage, you know, he had even, he must have been able to type pretty well, but he had put his fingers a little bit. So it was one sentence, you know, it was one off. If you really want to read it, you can, you have to check, you know, on the keyboard what, what he meant. And um, again, you know, and there, he, he gets this, he just puts it out and says, says um, for curiosity, let us try to construct the geometric action integral as one does in general relativity. Obviously, a natural candidate for it is the surface area of the two-dimensional world sheet. And then he, he just goes through, you know, the, uh, how to embed the two-dimensional world sheet in, I guess, what he thought was in four-dimensional space-time. And eventually, he writes down the, the, the action there in the middle, which is the... Uh, surface integral, which is the number goto action. And he, he realizes that, you know, when, if you do it like that, you get it via sort of constraints for free, uh, as constraints of the theory. Instead of just writing the way that people are doing, just as a two-dimensional free field theory. So he, he really was so ahead of all the people, he, it, 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 you know, he had the right ideas. Um, and of course, that was very influential in string theory. Let me see how am I doing. I wanted to be rather quick, so let me just end by um, give you another little story. And that is that. So wh when we had announced the Nobel Prize, uh, and then suddenly we got a telephone call from some people in numerical analysis. And they said, if, if Professor Nambo comes to Stockholm, uh, could, could we please you know, have him for half a day or so? Because it turned out that he was the, their hero in numerical analysis. So why was that? Well, you know, in, in 1974, he wrote a paper, which I remember at the time, we were a bit mystified by, it was called Generalized Hamiltonian Dynamics. And that this is where he, he proposed a possible generalization of classical Hamiltonian dynamics to three-dimensional phase space. And um, it was, um, at the time, the people got very interested. You know, Hamiltonian formalisms had been sort of resurrected by, by string theory, because and all this program by, by, by Dirac, et cetera, were rediscovered. And this, so I don't know if that was the reason why he put it out, because th this was a paper he had or, or the work he had done at the institute 20 years earlier, but he had had it in, in his cupboard. But anyhow, he pulled it out. Unfortunately, he didn't come to Stockholm, so he could meet. It would have been interesting to, to see how the three things. But again, I, I just wanted to, you know, the, here to give you a few of these snapshots, partly about the, the work we did, and partly to, to see the influence he had. and. Um, this is, um, I think, rather remarkable that he could pull these things which could be so useful for many things. Like, you know, going back to the superconductivity paper, which I think is one of the most important in the last century, you know, it, it's, it, it really changed so much of the subsequent development in physics. So, uh, let me end by saying that to cheer up, Nambu had a long life. He had a very successful life in science. And starting from this little boy in the aftermath of the, um, I guess, the, 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 the big uh, uh, earthquake in, 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 in Tokyo, which made his family to mo move away. And then eventually he ended up with this, which I think was extremely well deserved. And, um, I think it's such a nice picture of a man who was really the, one of the biggest gentlemen in physics and one of the big, biggest, as we have said, genius of, of uh, the last century. So I'm glad I could come here and honor him. So thank you.
What's the connection of Nambu dynamics with numerical analysis? Well, since you need income, and I didn't go to hear any seminars, but I, I don't know. But uh, the way that they, they, they praised him, you know, it was um, nice to hear. All right, let's thank the speaker once again.